Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are working on making a path planning algorithm that can work on the city I live in. Um, so the, the pitch is, uh, I use Google Maps sometimes. My friends are like, we're going to a bar. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to a bar. And I ask Google Maps, like, hey, when, uh, when do I leave? And it says, hey, you take three buses, and they each come every half hour. And uh, we think that they're going to come on time, but you know that they're not. They're not going to come on time. And so if you kind of, like, miss this, this you, you leave five minutes later, and maybe you'll get to the place 45 minutes later. And I'm like, that pisses me off. That pisses me off. I just want to go to the place and I want to take like the most consistent and fast route, right? Google Maps seems to think that I don't have legs. So if I'm like, you know, like five blocks away from what I would consider like a train or a fast bus, it goes like, uh, no, you will wait 25 minutes for the bus that will bus you those five blocks. I'm like, no, 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 no. I have legs, I have legs. So there's like a bunch of things about like the, the path planning algorithms that I've seen in the wild that I don't like. Um, and I think that every one of them is making trade-offs. And so I want to build a path planning algorithm that allows me to like kind of punch those trade-offs in. So the idea is that like, you know, maybe I don't want to walk uphill. Maybe I'm more willing to wait because I don't feel like walking today. Maybe I would prefer consistency over speed. Maybe I don't want to walk uphill if the grade is higher than five degrees. Maybe I don't want to walk through Gastown in the middle of the night because I don't really like walking through Gastown with Darkout. You no, know, there's like all sorts of things that like I could like choose to punch in there. Um, and so I kind of want to like build all of that in. And so today's task is kind of doing like step one of that. Well, maybe step two. Step one, we could say, was getting this data. So what we have here is uh, a map of Vancouver with all of its streets, right? So if I like scroll over this stuff, we can kind of like see traits about those streets. Like, oh, this is a, you know, a semi-busy street, stuff like that. And we can like see that there's like a little white dot here that's kind of indicating like a, an approximate start point if we were to try to start finding path planning out start planning a path so that's step zero step one is actually planning a path but with like the stupidest way possible so um i think that where i want to start is just do a simple a star i think a star is like a good uh balance of kind of like speed and correctness it should give us like an optimal path reasonably fast um but that optimal path is just going to be based off distance and only distance. Um, and so that's the plan for today is just try to implement this. Implement this. And uh, depending on how fast that goes, either like it might go really smooth and we might just rip through it, in which case there's kind of like a couple branches that we can go down. One is optimization. So this stuff is all running client side in my browser and WASM module. Um, it's possible that we could try to like tip plan a path like from the UBC all the way over to like the edge of Burnaby. And maybe that will be kind of slow. Right, there's a chance that it, like I would like to see um, all paths planned within one frame. That's what I would like to see. So we could kind of go down that route, or um, if it's like maybe fast enough, we could look at like configuration. So like maybe I want to punch in that like here. Let's see if we can find an example. Is this is this uh, this is a bike route? What's where's like Granville? This this is Granville. Yeah. So maybe maybe I want to see things that say like highway trunk that's not helpful to me i was like i was the thought there's like maybe there are some traits here so like oak street maybe has highway primary maybe i don't want to walk down busy streets so maybe we can start looking at like how would we weight the algorithm to try to avoid stuff like that we could try to look into that or maybe i don't want to walk, to walk down roads i don't want to walk down like footways we can like go down the configuration path or the optimization path we'll see how we feel um or if we even get that far so we'll see we'll see um but i think step one is just jump into it so as of yesterday, um, we added this ability, we added like a lookup basically for every node in the graph, we can see his neighbors, right? So the white dot is the one that we're looking at, the blue dots are the things he's connected to, which means that we kind of have everything that we need in order to do a path plan, right? So, right, like if we're going from here, we probably want to add a button here that says like mark start, and then we'll just kind of like wiggle this thing around and see what, like try to draw a line. Um, let's actually start there. Let's start there is we'll start with a uh, uh, start uh, add interface to plan path. And then after that, we will plan path with a star. Okay, so step one, step one. Uh, I'm a really enjoyable lot had to come here. Oh, hey, thanks, appreciate it. Glad to have you, glad to have you. Um, okay, so let's me look at where is our entry point? Index JavaScript. I like guess kind of index HTML. Let's add a little button here. Uh, button. And we'll call it start path plan now, please. 
And he probably needs an ID, which is a start path. And maybe we want one to end. That's fine. Start path is good enough. If we're just trying to like debug, do initial debugging, this is plenty good enough for us. Plenty good enough. We don't have to get crazy. We don't have to get crazy. And we're here we're going to say what? Like document get element by ID. And the ID is a start path. I think we called it. I already forgot. My memory is not that good. Start path. And we'll say, uh, you know, if somebody clicks this thing, we ask our WebAssembly module to do something. So we say, hey, could you uh, maybe start path? <laughs> Question mark. Um, sure. Yep. And I don't think we need to pass in any extra info here because we already know where the center of the viewport is. We already have that information. So then we go into index zig and we say pub export function start. What was it called? Start path. Start path. And here, <clears throat> I guess we just say start. Uh, uh, here we're going to have to do something. Here we're going to have to do something, and I don't really know what that is. So I guess our app is going to have a path planner. <clears throat> and we're going to ask the path planner uh, to run, I guess, probably with like, maybe we'll just, we'll dispatch this into our app. Because like the way that this is structured is uh this this might look kind of stupid, um, but the way that this is structured is that we have um a thing like a like a like an object that we can use um from both like a WebAssembly context and a native context, and this index zig is just the bindings from the WebAssembly world into like the the generic world, and so this actually makes sense uh in that world. So we're going to app dot now. We'll add the same function. We'll add um. Pub function start path. And it just makes it easier because in now here we don't have to like even be aware of the fact that we're in WebAssembly. We can just kind of like treat it like normal code, which is just very nice for us. Start with. What am I talking about? Path. And here <clears throat> we'll probably say like start given our view state center. So give start planning from the center of the screen. And then we'll probably want to render something. Uh, maybe, maybe the, it's not really a start. Maybe we just like literally run, run a path plan. In which case, is the path planner even going to have state associated with them? I guess we'll find out. I'm, my assumption now is that he is going to have state associated with them, but maybe not. Um, and so maybe we'll just say that like this guy's going to give us a route and we're going to do something with that route. Uh, but we don't know what yet. We don't know what yet. So let's just kind of do this. And let's maybe stub out uh actually let's pretend that there let's let's assume for now that there's no state associated maybe that's going to be easier uh and we'll make a path planner module that feels right to me that just feels approximately right and maybe we'll make it so that like initially he just draws us a straight line yeah yeah so what do we call it we call it like run pub function run and he takes in a pause uh which we are calling gps coordinate right now it's not really a gps coordinate it's kind of like a it's kind of a uh um it's a it's like a meters thing but we haven't renamed it yet and actually it's going to be easier to just do this const struct is equal to path uh const path planner is equal to struct i would like to split a module but i don't want to split a module for all the types yet so we're just going to do it this way Oopsies, I just closed something I didn't want to. Uh, there we go. Path planner. And then here, he's going to have to return some form of route. And I guess the route is like a bunch of GPS cords. Or maybe we actually can get away with node IDs. Right? We don't actually have to remember the positions of each node. We just have to know which nodes we looked at, which is like a little bit less memory, um, which is nice. Um... Which here, maybe this also takes in maybe just like a start, which is a node ID. That feels a little nicer to me. Because I think that the unit of operation is definitely going to be nodes, right? Because if we want to look up our neighbors, we have to know which node to look up in the graph to look up that node's neighbors. That makes sense. Um, which kind of indicates that this thing is going to need a reference. 
to the node lookup as well as the adjacency map, almost certainly. So we're going to kind of like slap that shit in here. Which then makes it feel like either we take this stuff in on every run or we have this as like part of the path planner. I guess neither, like, the, semantically, those don't really make a difference. It really depends on how many member functions we end up trying to put in here. Um, for now, I'm going to make it a type that has memory associated with it, but there's a good chance that this gets, like, split out later. I just don't want to think about it. Um, if we find that this doesn't actually do that much, then we will rip it back out. I think we don't need ways, just points and node adjacency map. And we'll kind of call these references because we don't actually need to store the full thing. And there we go. And our initial look, I think, is just going to draw a straight line on the map, um, which will prove to us that everything is hooked up in a way that we can start working with it. So I guess we also need an end here, huh? Almost certainly. Uh, Jcency map is equal to a JCC map. There we go. And here we'll just return start end. This is an easy, an easy initial fix. Okay. So here we called path planner run. We're going to say uh, var pp is equal to path planner in it with our self points and self adjacency map and then we'll call pp run and uh then we'll draw the thing so here we draw the route by uh renderer uh let me think about this and this some of this could be called start path i'm just gonna call this a uh, plan path I think. Uh, no, it should be star path. Because, like, the thing is that uh, we... How do I say this? We have to re-render the screen on lots of conditions, right? And so if we were to just render the path at the end of this, um, then we would lose the state as soon as it finished. So we actually want to store the planned path as, like, something that we can re-render frequently uh, which is a little annoying but it's fine it's not the end of the world so maybe this will be like a bunch of node ids and maybe we will say that this is optional right or we kind of maybe we'll call the empty state option the uh, that's fine we can do this we can do this um then we don't actually do a render here we just store the planned path I think this is a pointer to local. Um, that does kind of seem that way, huh? I was kind of thinking that because this was a inline thing, like with a hard length, I thought that this would be compile time. But I think you're right that it's not. This is like a thing on the stack, which is fucking stupid. You're right. You're right. You're right. So we'll do this. Uh, you could return to node ID. Yeah, but I mean, this is going to turn into, this is going to turn into a more important thing anyway, so it's fine. It's fine. Uh, is there like a way, I guess we want to do, we can just call dupe on this. Uh, yeah. Which means that this gets to try, which means that this can fail. Uh, and then we're chilling. And then here we should say, uh, self planned. Well, I guess we have to do like a little bit of like memory management here. We say the new path is equal to the running PP as someone very, very intelligently pointed out, uh, that there are running PP is maybe not what you want, but it is what we are doing. Um, and then we will say self planned path, uh, self alloc free the existing plan path which is safe even on the case of the empty thing at first because the allocator checks inside this function somewhere if the bytes length is zero and he does nothing so we are chilling 
Um, and then we say only after that, only after we succeeded, then do we reassign this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, and then on render, we have to render this path. So self renderer, I guess that we want the bound render here. So const bound renderer is equal to this. Then we have bound renderer render. And then on top of that, we also now have to render this path. At least PP run is no longer dangling. God damn it. It's too easy. You guys are so, it's, it's so hard not to make the jokes. <laughs> uh, so I kind of want render points here to take in a mode as i32 then this will we will use that mode here this will let us use this existing function to draw either points or lines or line strips whatever the fuck we want to draw um and now the current users of this guy has to call with gl points because all of these guys actually do want to draw points um and they also set the point size manually here we can kind of move this externally so basically everybody who was passing in 10 here will call bound renderer uh inner point size set 10.0 and then you know they can choose to do whatever they want which i think is fair which is fair um uh, and then here we can now say we want to render self uh i forgot i forgot what do we call it we called it planned path and we can render it with gl line strip and if we didn't miss anything, which we did, but if we hadn't, we would have been in a good state. <laughs> he says there's no function run here, which I thought there was. There is a function run, but we are not passing in the right amount of arguments, which is making him angry. He's an angry boy. So, oh, that's why this is called start path, huh? Is because uh, we have to start the path somewhere. We move the screen to somewhere else, and then that's how we set the end path. So actually, here, we don't actually do this path planning stuff. Here we just say uh, self path start is equal to self view state center. Ah, this is making sense now. It's making sense. And then uh, we just on mouse move. That's when we calculate the, the new path. So here, this is where we do all this. In which case it kind of does it. Now we don't actually need to stash the planned path because it will be updating on every frame. Now that might be stupid, uh, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can't make me do something better. <laughs> uh, so here we say this is the path. And then we just call bound renderer. Render points of this new path. Uh, with GL line strip. Uh-huh. And then we defer alloc self alloc free new path. Okay. And then did we, we had this, this is gone now. Okay, so we should now, if everything builds, it doesn't build, it never builds. Uh, he still thinks there's no function run. Because I still am not passing in the allocator. And I'm still not passing in the start path, the path start. Or, okay, there we go. There we go. That looks like almost like it. But he still thinks there's no function named run in app pathfinder. Probably also because I'm not uh, using self here. That would also do it. So was I passing my PP? No, I was not, which was actually causing problems. Uh, this is equal to self. And uh, this is equal to, I think everything else is used. <clears throat> okay, what else needs to get done? No field named path start, so we need to set that guy somewhere um so this is going to be something probably a gps cord which is actually shouldn't be called a gps cord but oh uh, well and then when we run this thing this is all going to be if uh path start we have a path start to work with and if we have a path start work we can do all this chillin This equals self, oh god. <laughs> uh, did I write that somewhere? That's pretty funny. If I did, I wasn't paying attention. 
Uh, 302... Oh, he needs not GPS cords. He actually needs a node ID. Which kind of indicates that... Maybe we need to... Cache the latest, the closest node ID. Okay. Here's what we'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on every time we move the mouse... Every time we move the mouse, we will stash the closest node ID here. So it's that instead of node ID equals way node IDs, we'll say uh, self closest node. Actually, we can just do this. We can just do it down here and say self closest node equals node ID. Sure. And then when we call start path, instead of using the coordinate of the center, we use uh, the closest node. Okay, that should be fine. He's mad still. Uh, no field name path start. Really? Did I delete him like a dumbass? I did. So we still need that. No, you said it, but it triggered my GTS PTSD from jQuery times. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> I would. I definitely would have said it. The uh, my memory on like what is coming out of my mouth is like almost non-existent, which is really bad. Probably in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's good enough for now. <laughs> I guess all of this can only happen if we found a closest point so that here we can pass in the node ID. There we go. Come on, baby. We're getting so close. Uh, PP run. Key returns an error, but we can't return an error from here. So here we have to write this, and then on mouse move, uh, in index, let's say, fuck, fuck, fuck. On mouse move, this guy needs to now write a uh, catch unreachable. We could log an error, but we're not going to be good citizens of the world. He's saying expected type void, did not save. I did not save. That will always get me. And then on local zig, the this version, we have to kind of slap some tries on here. Uh, except not on these. Or on these. Really just on the stuff at the top, and I wasn't really looking. There we go. Uh, on mouse down also isn't a try. I don't know why I thought everything in the world had to get tried. Only some things had to get tried. I should have read a little carefully. Are you using line with it all? Apparently its support is mixed. I tried to, it didn't work, and then I opened Chrome and it looked fucked up, and so I've just deleted it. Line width should not be in the code base anywhere. It should not. But if it is, it's a mistake. It was like a thing that we left in while we were trying stuff around. Because yeah, it doesn't work on it doesn't work on my Firefox, so. Lucky me. Lucky me. Well, I guess it, I guess like saying it doesn't work isn't necessarily true. I think the API has to be supported, but it can set the minimum and maximum values to 1.0, in which case it's effectively unusable. But I think setting it to 1.0 is technically always allowed. <laughs> if we're going to get, you know, really stupid about it. Okay, so if I did everything right, I should be able to go in here and I should be able to say start path. And now if I move over here, what I was hoping to see was a line between the start and the end. Um, but instead I'm seeing jack shit. So we haven't done everything right. We have not done everything right. And now the question becomes, why the fuck not? It could be because we didn't uh, get the newest version of the Wiser module. That happens sometimes if we are, don't click the right button. Um, but no, he's not. So the next thing that we want to try is we want to check if the render. I guess we're not rendering. We are rendering. We're supposed to render here. So we should check what's going on here. Um, log debug. And we'll say path start. And we'll log that shit. And we'll also maybe log the new path. And let's just kind of see where that gets us. <clears throat> So, start a path. We are, in fact, getting a path, right? We are seeing a new path, and it should be being rendered. So the question is, why the fuck is it not being rendered? These points are still correctly getting rendered, so it looks like our like change to the point rendering is working okay, which means that this render point function is like mostly fine, right? This like the idea of, oh, this is not what we should be doing. We should not... Oh, that sucks. Uh, okay, so... 
I'm thinking for a second. Uh, right, so because the way that this works, the way all of this rendering works, we have, you know, points in a big buffer, you know, you know, like a one, one, we'll call it. And then like two, two, these are like, you know, this point and this point and this point, three, three, these are just in a buffer. And if we want to draw a line between these points, we would, we have a second buffer that says zero, one, two, which says essentially, hey, if I give you this buffer, draw the indexes into this array, uh, skipping some amount of stride, right? We'll, we'll say that like the, the GPU knows that these are grouped by twos. And so here we say like, hey, here's like a list of things that you want to draw and then draw them in that order. Um, so you can do things now, like if you had, um, you know, you wanted to draw a square, you have to draw a square out of triangles. So what you can do here is you can say like, draw points zero, one, two, and then zero, two, three, right? You can do that. And then like all of a sudden, like you can kind of like piece together complex shapes out of less point less points kind of uh so that's what i was hoping i could do here except for the fact that these point ids here are not on the gpu anywhere that it kind of knows about um so there is like we need to basically create an area of the gpu where we can upload custom like segments of of ids essentially uh, because we have we have one big chunk of IDs that is essentially like the roads on the map, right? These roads on the map are all on the GPU already. But if we're not rendering the in the same order the roads, which we which we're not, we have to upload new indexes or just upload coordinates. And I think probably uh, the easiest thing to do right now is just use uh, uh, like upload coordinates, even though it doesn't make sense. Like it's more correct probably to upload the node IDs. I don't want to do that right now. So I'm not going to, <laughs> because that requires like some like OpenGL uh, interaction that I just don't want to deal with right now. So instead, we'll say for, we'll say the uh, path points is the, is an alloc of float32s that is twice as long as the new path length, because we need an X and Y for each point then what we'll do is we'll just say for <coughs> for path points we have a point id nope for new path sorry we have a point id and an index we're going to say path points i times two is equal to the longitude because it's xy this plus one is equal to the latitude and these aren't actually latitude and longitude, this is y and x, actually. Uh, these are like f offsets from some point in meters. Now we can look up our uh, self points get point ID. And we just call this point dot. Oh, they're still called latitude and longitude here, which is wrong. But a fix for another time. A fix for another time. Fuck. This needs to write try. And then down here, instead of render points, we say render chords. Because this render chords already supports taking arbitrary coordinates, um, which is very slightly different than what I was talking about a second ago. So it's it does make sense. It does make sense. And then we have to free this thing, huh? So first of all, this should go here. Defer this and defer free path points as well. <clears throat> Hey, I just wish to you about a link leak in a recent video. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. It's probably fine, but appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So now, if I call this start path plan, do I need? Is there like something about this? Why is it not? It's only saying path start, no path end. Because I'm not logging the path end. That would do it. So first of all, uh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Um, okay, I guess let's double check here. So render chords is supposed to take in coordinates as float32s and it uploads an array buffer. All that seems fine. Um, here, can we stood debug stood log debug the <clears throat> path points 
as uh, any. And we'll log path points. <clears throat> am I doing something fucking stupid? Oh, this should be lawn lat. I am positive of that. <clears throat> and, uh, okay, let's try again. Let's try again. There we go. So now we are seeing a white line drawn between the start and the end. Perfect. Uh, let's make the line blue, because that's, I want it to be blue. Because uh, those are, we only have two colors, <laughs> white and blue, because we are too lazy to hook up all the other colors. Um, but there we go. Okay. So now we are seeing a straight line path planned, and now we can kind of start getting a little crazy and try to actually implement this correctly. In reality, it should be a different color than the color of us highlighting away, because that's fucking stupid. Uh, okay. Okay, so all of that to do nothing, right? Kind of just, all we're doing is visualizing, but the visualizing is important. It's important to get that through first, I think. Otherwise, we'll implement a bunch of stuff and not know if it works. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, what the fuck did I just click? I clicked something, I didn't want it. Path plan with A star. A star search algorithm. A star. Okay, so basically the way that this works is they kind of do like a breadth first search, but the... Uh, it's not really breadth search, I guess. They kind of like use a heuristic to say, which thing should I check next, right? So if you have like a point here, say you have like a graph, you know, like this. Do 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 do. Right, and we're gonna we, we, maybe we're trying to like you know half of it goes down, half of it goes to the left. What they do is they say, um, say I'm trying to go from here to here. You can like say what is the straight line distance to here from my neighboring points? So here he'll say, well, okay, he's going to immediately advance to this because it's the only option, right? But here he has to make a decision. Am I going to go down or am I going to go right? And he can say by like looking at these two points and saying straight line distance here and straight line distance here, which one is closer, right? And he'll just take the closer one, hand wavy. Now this straight line distance is just like, a function you use you can use any heuristic function if i understand correctly that is shorter or equal to the real path um which we're going to abuse at some point in the future for sure um but basically basically that's kind of like the core of a star is just like look at where you are pick the thing that's like the easiest thing or like the the most likely thing to be the correct path and that can get kind of crazy because once you start, like, if, if you were to, like, stick a wall in here and then you were to connect to this like this, right? Now, all of a sudden, that heuristic is, like, kind of fucked, right? Because you're going to look here every time first. But once you've looked here once, uh, well, I guess you won't look here because there's no connection here. But you know what I mean. Like, if there was a wall that kind of, like, went through this stuff, maybe the wall is kind of here. Right? So... Here you think that this is the next best option, but in reality it's not because it doesn't actually connect. But <clears throat> once you've calculated that once, then you go like, oh, there's actually like you you know once you've looked at this node one time, you've like you know that the only way back is like this way or something. I can't remember exactly how it works, but it's something like that. We will see. We'll see. We'll see. Um. <clears throat> okay. So the implementation is. Uh, essentially they have, they, they, they describe these two things as G and H. H is the like straight line distance that we were talking about. G is like the real distance, right? So as you expand through here, you will start, oh, right. Okay. So th there, I think G is the distance from the start node, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, yes. So as you, as you get farther from the start node, you will compute the real distances in the graph to each point, right? So once I've looked at this point one time, I know that I have to go this, this, this. I like know that path. Um, kind of. Um, Jesus has traveled. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Sorry. I got a little backwards. A little backwards. Okay. I make it a little, sue me. <laughs> Don't sue me, please. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. So the next, the most likely thing is the shortest path that we've traveled plus the straight line distance to the end. I had it very slightly off. Um, so basically as we go, we can, up, we can calculate the, the G distance, the, the real, the real travel distance. And then sometimes if there's like two paths to the same node, 
right? You might find out later that you picked the wrong initial path and you have to update the straight line distance, the, the like real distance there later. So there's going to be some tracking in there coming from that. So open set, I think this is just like your queue of like which thing is most likely to look at next. This is uh, where do we come from? Uh, because when you get to the end, you need to backtrack the path to get back to the start, right? Because you will just know, you will like, if you didn't keep track of where you came from, you would find, you could find like how many steps it takes to get to the end, but you wouldn't know which steps to take. Um, I came from an empty map. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, this is the store, the store scores of all of the nodes from the start so how far did i make how how far did i have to walk from the start to get there this is the heuristic score oh no this is no this is not that this is f score is the where to, how the cost to get to me plus my heuristic plus my heuristic um which is straightforward and then here they're just basically saying while i while open set is not empty where open set is like your queue of nodes that you want to look at while there's nodes to look at um, pull current the node and open set having the lowest F score. Yeah, so this is just get me, give me the pop, pop your fucking stack, pop the stack, please. And if I'm at the end, then we reconstruct the path. Otherwise, uh, remove the current. Each neighbor of current, we do some sort of right. So we look at our neighbors, look at our neighbors, and we calculate a tentative G score. Why, why is this tentative? Plus D. D is the distance metric. Yeah, okay, so why is this tentative? Oh, because it might not, it might, it might be a more expensive path than the path that we've, if we've seen the node before, and, th and it was easier to get there, then we, like, discard this path. We go, fuck it, we have a better way to get there. We got there a better way now, man. So we don't have to worry about it. Uh, and, but, if, if this is the new, the new best path, we have to update the heuristic score of all my neighbors. Right, so, this is kind of like saying, like, uh... I have a point here, a point here, and a point here, right? So these are all connected. And let's say that for some reason, whatever reason, I went this way first. So this is like, I went here, one, one, and I thought that this is like two to get here, right? Now let's say that we have like another node over here. They said that the we have to, when we get to here, we say, okay, so it took me two steps to get here, which means that if I'm trying to get to here, uh, I'm going to have, I know that it took, two to get to this guy plus one more so this is like three plus heuristic right but then if the, and then i come back and i go oh that was the wrong way i'd like to go this way instead and so i go this way now all of a sudden this costs one instead of two and now this is no longer three plus heuristic but this is two plus heuristic right so that's what that's what this updating is doing um and that's it that's it eventually you'll have you you'll have gotten to the point where you got to the end and then you Call it a fucking day, baby. Um, okay. Easy, easy. Okay. Uh, so let's just fucking get moving. Now, I think what I would like to do probably is I don't want to think about the backtracking yet. Right? So I wonder if we, if it actually makes sense for us to ah fuck it fuck it we'll think about me we'll just do it all once i was gonna say that we could maybe like add a button that lets us step one step of the algorithm one step at a time um which would be kind of nice um but it's okay i guess we could actually we could still do that um in let's um if we save the whole state of the path planner we can render every single node that we looked at at once without having to worry about rendering the path. So essentially we can just render all of the G scores. And we could maybe color them according to their G score as well. Which would maybe be like an okay first debugging step. Let's do that, let's do that. So uh, our path planner, I think that I want this to, instead of this having a run function, I want them to have a step function because we love iterators right now. And uh, maybe it's fine. Maybe instead we'll just, we'll, we have to just store his G scores. 
So those G-scores are a map with default value infinity. Fuck maps, we're gonna do an array. Um, so this is gonna be like an a, a array of floats. F-scores is also an array of floats. And here we are going to initialize these with infinity for each of the, for how many points there are. So we have to say that our G-scores is a alloc alloc, which means that we need an allocator. Visual debugging is also good for tuning the heuristics. Yeah, I think like no matter what, we're going to do some form of visual debugging. I just don't know like exactly what it's going to look like yet. Uh, so we're going to name we're going to create floats that are points num points, and we're going to do that for both of these num points. Boom 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 num points. So we have G scores and F scores. Um, okay, and then these get stored in here. simple it's easy it's it's all straightforward so far <laughs> we have g scores and f scores now these guys all have to be mem set with infinity g scores with uh f stood math inf f32 and f scores also chilling 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 uh and then we set the initial value of g score start to zero and the f score to the heuristic okay so that makes sense so do we have our start point we have it here so g self g scores start is equal to zero and self f scores start is equal to uh <clears throat> Straight line distance, so D. We'll call it D, distance. I wonder if we can get away with distance squared. I don't want to think about it. it. It's possible that we could get away with distance squared, which would be faster, but um, that's an optimization for future time. Let's let's start with the stupidest, fa stupidest, slowest things before. I've used priority queue for AQ. I store for it. That was my plan as well. I, was, I wasn't sure how well suited it is, but we'll see. We will see. I like how often I'm doing something in two steps, just like, I've done that before. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's just done everything. He beat me to it. Um, so the distance between A, which we'll probably use node IDs here, probably makes the most sense. It's possible that we might decide that we want to use positions later, but for now we'll use these. And we'll say, points get A. Uh, we'll call these IDs. So we can do this. Uh, and then I think that these are GPS cords. We have like, uh, a little bit of a linear algebra thing. So, we'll, well, we have vectors and we have vectors and points that are not really connected to this, which is maybe a bit of a mistake. We might want to fix that later, but it's okay. We'll just do the conversion manually for now. I'm pretty sure this should turn into a no op, uh, of how do I call this? Like, I think that because the layouts of these are identical, it should, the compiler should figure that out and be okay with it. Like in reality, these things should all end up in registers off rip anyways. Um, so I'm not really too worried about it. And then we just do a B sub A length, return that. That way I don't have to think about it. <laughs> hey, is it bigger to work in a big or a small company? What do you think? I think that they both have their like massive pros and massive cons. Big companies, you get to chill a lot more. Uh, everything's like way more structured. Uh, there's way less like like room for individual fuck up. Like not in a bad way. Like it's just there's way there's way more process that protects you as a person. You get to work with more people. Small company, you get to like you have so much more responsibility, but you also get to make so much more progress, right? You're you're in early stages, and early stages things just move so fucking fast. You have like huge impact. Anything that you do gets like propagated like through all of time right you can you can kind of like measure your contributions in so to some extent as like thing times time that it's active for and you get to like you get to learn so fast you like my experience so far is that like you you tend to work with smarter people because you can be like you can be more selective about your hiring um but it i mean it comes with massive downsides that are like you know if you don't work if you don't work really hard today the company might die right like uh so it really depends on like what your goals are i think that i've learned for myself that i'm less of a big company person more of a small company person um but i mean that comes with its caveats as well 
right? Like, I think that it's very easy to get, like, frustrated in a big company because, like, you get bogged down by process. You're just like, I want to do this thing. Like, why the fuck do I have to fill up three forms to just do a simple thing, right? It's like, where in, like, a small company, you can be like, uh, yeah, I just did the thing, but I, like, also just fucking tanked the performance of everything and uh, we're fucked, right? Like, it's just like, <laughs> you know, pros and cons of both. Pros and cons of both. Just let me push the prod. Yeah, exactly. In a small company, that's way more likely to be happening. <laughs> uh, so this is the distance between start and end. Thanks very much for your effort. No problem. No problem. Uh, this is A chord. And this is B chord. Would you recommend recommend mid-sized companies with 30 people? Let's be, let's be clear here. Don't trust my advice on anything related to this. Like, like in reality, I've worked at like two companies, right? So, uh, who fucking knows, right? Like, I should be clear about that. Um, I've never worked at a company with like 30 or 50 people, so I can't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Also, like, of course, like, the, the variance within these things is also very large, right? Who knows if um, my experience with larger and smaller companies... And like limited experience plus like talking to friends, right? Who knows if my limited experience is reflective of the real world? Who knows? Who knows? I'm a junior in a small company. I have to go through 400 tickets of the backlog to move any that are not needed. Dude, I would never... I would never trust my junior to make those decisions. Maybe that just means I'm an asshole. But there's no fucking way. Because like, like you need so much context to understand if something needs to be done or not. That's crazy. No offense to you. Like, sure, like, do the work that you're given. But, like, I would never ask you to do that. <laughs> uh, thanks, Foxster, for the prime. Lunatic is saying that he's had the same experience in big and small companies. So that's good to know. It's like, at least we have two data points now <laughs> instead of one data points. Uh, okay, I, I have to do work. I have to do work because if I don't do work, we're not going to finish. We have to finish today. It's important. Well, it's not important. Nothing we do is important, but it's, like, a little bit important. <laughs> the PP needs an allocator. Makes sense, makes sense. And uh, we need to try this thing because allocations can fail. So now he has to say that I can fail, which is fine with us. And we're good to go. Okay, so we did this. We have not initialized came from or open set. So open set, um, I think that I don't need to, we can kind of initialize those here if we feel like it. Uh, so we want the zig priority queue. Um, I want zig standard lib. This channel is 100% important fun. I think it's 100% fun. I'll give you that. I'll, I'll allow it. I will not allow important. <laughs> I, will, I will shut that down. There's no way. Um, okay, priority queue. So here, he... How do we make this thing? This is a uh, generic function that takes in t uh how do i is this like a function hello oh yeah okay i see t context compare function so our what are we what are we taking in we are taking in node ids is our priority queue thing so q is a stood priority queue and he is going to be of node ids which means that we actually do need the context of our path planner uh, is the context does it take does it turn into pointer? No. So we just say that the pointer it's a path planner like this. And the compare function is gonna be uh can we just do actually this? Less than we take in the path planner as well as A and B. Oh, that feels actually really nice. Cause then here we can just type like path planner less than and then just kind of like by chance we've already stored the g and f scores as members because we wanted to draw them which means that he has everything he needs right here which is very very chill so what is the what is the scoring mechanism here lowest f score value so uh self f scores uh f scores a value is less than self f scores b value. Okay. Simple, simple, simple. 
we already have portals in the chambers. Yeah, somebody added that yesterday. I can't remember their name, unfortunately. And they very kindly responded to some feedback where I was worried that they would get stuck. So they shifted the top one just a smidgen over to the right so that if, if a ball starts falling vertically, it will just like slowly move to the right and eventually get kicked out, which is like sick. Sick. I want to work in a one-man company like this one. Dude, me too. <laughs> I'm hoping that eventually this can become sustainable. Uh, because that would be fucking sick to work in a one-man company. <laughs> uh and then we, our context is uh self okay um i'm a little confused here about um when we ins if this is like an array that sorts the uh the elements on insertion then if we update the f scores as we go then we have a problem uh, you guys are both complaining that I didn't return math order. It's like, fine. You know what? If you want me to do what the compiler is going to tell me to do, fine, I'll do it. Um, so I have to double check here. We might have to pop elements and re-push them if, um, if, depending on how this thing works. So is this like insertion sort? I shouldn't say insertion sort because I don't know if that's actually what that word means. Is this, does this get sorted on insert? <laughs> Uh, how do I put shit in here? How do I... How do I put stuff in? Add. So, here he sifts up on add. Where sift up, I assume, just swaps things until they're in the right spot. So he says... I'm sifting up... From... Oh, so I'm like taking the index of the thing that I'm moving. So this gets start stuck at the end, and he just keeps walking him back, probably. Parent index. Oh, this is a tree. This is a tree. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm assuming... Well, I, I, I mean, I'm just assuming that this is a tree because of the fact that he's shifting left by one and calling him parent. So I'm assuming that this is kind of stored like a binary tree where you have like this... You know, like this, like this, like this. And then this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And so, like, by just shifting right by 1, you're, like, dividing by 2 and then going up one level in the tree, I think. Do you use earphones regularly or just for stream? Dude, I don't think... I think my earphones are probably in for, like, 90% of my awake time. It's maybe not good, but it just it just feels better. <laughs> um okay so then he he basically moves the parent okay what's going on what's going on here so he says the child index me self items my child item is the parent oh i see so he stores the parent index oh i see he's swapping them he's swapping them if they're too low I see. Sure. And then eventually he gets to the end and he says, okay, we found where he belongs and we'll put him there. So this is uh, my concern about it being like sort on insertion does seem valid. Now the question is, is there a way for us to update? Yes, update. LM new LM. So what does this do? The the word update feels reasonable to me. Um, so he takes he finds where the old thing was. And then he decides to move it around. So here this is like saying, hey, I had node ID five and I want to replace it with node ID six. That's like a thing that this API is supporting. So he like deletes the number five and replaces it with six. Or but but if we do update with five and five we do get like resorting. So probably it makes sense for us to just do it that way, where every time every time we make a change to the F scores, we just resort that element for each element that we change the F score of. So we'll just have to remember that. We'll just have to remember that. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's totally fine. So let's keep going. Okay, so uh we do a Q. I assume there's like a pop. No, peak. Do I have to peak it, then delete it or something? Remove. Remove the highest priority element. We should also be careful about whether or not highest priority is the smallest thing or the biggest thing. 
Not sure about that. Um, were the second argument should be popped before the before the third argument? The second argument should get popped before its third argument. So it's picking the smallest thing. Right? Picking the smallest thing. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> Which is good for us, because our distance we want small distance no number, man. Um, so we can just do Q remove or null. While we can do this, we have a current node ID. Simple. It's simple. That's current. If current node ID is equal to n, then we uh, return the path, <laughs> which we can't do right now. So uh, we're just gonna use the straight line path here still. Uh, but we'll figure it out eventually. Uh, then we remove current, which we did already by calling remove or null. So yeah, that's fine. There's just using different different syntax. That's fine. And then we have to iterate our neighbors. So we say for we, good thing we have this adjacency map thing. Get the neighbors for the current node ID. And we just say for neighbors, we have a neighbor. For neighbors neighbor, we set a tentative G score, which is our current G score. So. TGS. Isn't that like a what's TGS Fridays? That's like a word that I've heard. But like what is it? Oh, TGI Fridays. It's a restaurant. <laughs> okay, whatever. Shut up, guys. Shut up. <laughs> so we have our G scores with the current node ID value. Thank God it's Friday. Oh yeah, maybe I was confusing it with that maybe as well. Maybe that's where it gets its name from. The bar is thank God it's Friday. Plus the distance from the current node ID to the neighbor. Wow, that's simple. If TGS is less than this, which um, I don't know if we have to be careful here about, um, I would assume that the optimizer is allowed to make the assumption that that memory address will not change, right? I think that's the whole point of like thread barriers and stuff. So I think it's fine to do it this way, but it might it might make more sense to do like current G score is this to like kind of inform it. I can never remember. Uh at the very least, this is nicer to look at. So we can pretend that that's why we did it. <laughs> we can pretend. Um so if the if the tentative score is less than the current score, then we update came from, which we're not doing yet. Uh, the G scores at current node ID value is equal to TGS. And then we have to update all the F scores of the neighbor. Oh, we also have to update the G score of the neighbor. Oh, oops, this is the neighbor value. Woo, woo. Scary. Uh, so this is TGS plus self distance. Oh, we have the... Uh, self distance from the neighbor to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Might be thinking of trivial graph format. Definitely, I'm not thinking of trivial graph format. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, and then here we have to resort the array. Oh, but we don't. Uh, yeah, we probably do, huh? Uh, Q, because if these things are in the queue, they definitely need to get reprioritized, but they might not be in the queue. So the question is, is this, is, does this requeue the same element multiple times? And what does update do if the element is not currently in there? Element not found. Okay. And here it looks a lot like that it doesn't handle like duplicates. So I guess what makes sense for us to do is to, is to call update with the neighbor, right? And if it's not in there, uh, 
we also have to be careful here. There's probably, it could probably fail with allocation errors as well, would be my guess. This can only fail with element not found. I because these aren't unless these return errors. No, so this can only fail with element not found. So here, I mean, it's probably good just to be sure that we can do like a std debug assert e is equal to error element not found. But I'm pretty sure that's the only thing that can happen here. And then if this happens, then we can just do a try q add neighbor. Maybe we're done. <laughs> Maybe that's an A star. Um, we haven't done the, came the path resolution yet, but that's okay. Um, and so what I want to do here is just at the end of all of this, missing dnit, that's a really good point. We would have found that eventually from our linter script, but it's nice. We also would have probably killed the stream by running out of memory before that. So that's actually really good for us <laughs> because uh, and then I would have had to use alt sysric f to force kill the most memory expensive process and then i would have got mad and then i would the you know i would always get mad uh so it's good i'm glad you pointed it out is there anything else i'll get in here um fuck it let's just run it we ball remove or null expected all oh, right so we use const we always type const when we should we should always we should always remember to type var um Node ID doesn't have, oh, we can't do memory comparisons here. Uh, but we can, okay, we, there's only one thing in here, so it's fine. It's fine. Strong typing gets us again. Neighbors also needs to be, whoa, wait, why does neighbors have to be, oh, the node adjacency map is the problem. Uh, we can probably change the node adjacency map so that we get neighbors can definitely, definitely should not change the internal state. So that can be const and then update. Uh, requires us to punch in that same thing twice because we're just kind of trying to trigger a resift. Resifties. And then here uh, we return error no path. Pathfinder is unit two. I think that we did that, but maybe we didn't. No, we did not. Good eye. Good eye. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we would have got there, but we would have got there after I got fucking angry, so. <laughs> it's a big win for us. Uh, this probably has taken an allocator. Yeah. And here we need to uh, alloc free G scores and alloc free F scores. And then at the end of all this, we did want to render the nodes with G scores. So I think that we might actually come back to the idea that um, we should be able to render render points with custom arrays here. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that fix if statement. I don't see a problem, but maybe maybe we'll. Maybe I'll run into it, and then I'll be like, oh, I should listen to the chatter. Um, okay, so I think should be neighbor, which if statement. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but maybe that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't see a problem anywhere. So we will we'll see. I'm sure that I'm sure that I'll be mad about that later. But for now, we live, we learn. Uh, okay, so I kind of want to go back to being able to render a chunk of element IDs directly. So I think that what we can do is let's um let's go back to this before before we get crazy. Uh, can we, okay, let's go back here and just say, if true, return this. Uh, because I want to test the idea of, like, runtime changing an, an element buffer. So I think that we should be able to just say, in our renderer, 
in our renderer, we should be able to have like custom VBO or EBO. And this is going to be like a, uh, like a GPU buffer that we can like swap in whatever data we feel like. Okay. So we'll have custom EBO is equal to custom EBO. Then what does setup map indices do? <coughs> Create an element array buffer. So we can just kind of do this. Custom EBO is this. We say, we don't even have to bind it. We just create a buffer and we just call it a day. I think that's all we need to do here. Then we can just call this stuff with our custom EBO on render points. So here we can just say, hey, I want to use our custom EBO and I want to put these point IDs in there. And then I just want to draw those elements. Uh, <clears throat> which is not this API. So this is, we're going to say, we're going to draw them in mode. And we're going to say, how many of them are there? So it's point IDs len. Then we're going to say, what is the format of these indexes on sign in? And then we're going to say, what the fuck? What is GL draw elements, it takes the count. Oh, count, then offset. So this is, yeah, length, and then offset is zero. Tend of G score needs to be compared to the neighbor's G score, not the current G score. Uh, that sounds like a mistake that. Oh. I see what you're saying. Uh. I see. I see. Is that true? It is true. It is true. And we don't ever update G score current here. So this current G score can be set here. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay. Do we build? Nope. Because here we need to pass in the alloc. Um, GL draw elements too many things because mode I had in your choice by mistake. Uh, I didn't save here by mistake, <clears throat> and then this needs an int cast on him. Okay, so here, hopefully nothing fucking explodes. Let's turn on like. Debug point neighbors, that's still working. This is still working. Start path plan. Start path plan now, please, does not look like he's working. Which is kind of surprising, to be honest. So. <clears throat> oh, which is even crazier, because I didn't even change this at all. Oh, it's because I'm an idiot. Uh, because I didn't actually set them to anything. That would do it. So here I wanted to change this to render points as a line strip, and then we can just use new path here directly. That's what I was trying to do. What if I say please harder? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Vancouver is in Canada yet, right? There is multiple Vancouver's, but the Vancouver we're talking about is in Canada. Okay, sick. So now we can just kind of render any arbitrary set of point IDs. Um, and let's just double check that my, like, RAM isn't just, like, exploding by doing that. Uh, nope, seems fine. Okay, chill. Okay, so now, the reason that we wanted to do that was so that we could do a render points of the G scores for this thing. So now we should just be able to... Let me think about this a little bit. <clears throat> we want to look at any point where the g-score is not zero. That is a point that we looked at. So maybe we can just start there. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to go four pp g-scores. Um, if the score is not equal to zero, or if it's greater than zero, I guess. <clears throat> 
I guess not equals fine. You're not supposed to do floating point comparisons like that, but in this case, it's kind of fine because we know that zero is a marker, and so the the like the binary format of that zero is going to be the same. And anytime we modified it, it's like because we actually do want to see it, so it's like it's fine to write not zero here. Um, and then here we're going to say uh, we're going to call this like scene g scores is a uh, std array list of node IDs initialized with an allocator. We're going to remember to do the dnit thing. And then here we're going to say scene g scores append. Uh, <clears throat> I guess this is the node ID comes like this. That sounds right to me. And then we can render the G the scene G scores items as points. <clears throat> uh, okay, he doesn't like this. Uh, this probably has to be like int cast, which is fine by me. Fine by me. Uh, error unit is ignored. Sure. <clears throat> okay, refresh. Okay, start path plan now. Oh, Jesus. Okay, guys, we're looking at every single G-score, which is uh, either really bad, it's probably really bad. Wait, a lot of these aren't even, like, valid points, are they? Maybe they are. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. So this is actually doing the right thing, kind of. Um. So the nodes here. Um. How do I say this? Every node, even the ones, so we're, we're still sending every single node, even if it's not connected to a road. So all of the building nodes are actually still in here, like, which is kind of funny. So if we go in here and we try to look like in here, we can still actually see the shapes of all the buildings, which is very funny, very funny. And so the problem here is that um, I should have been saying not equal to stood math inf of F32. Because all of those guys will still be unlooked at. We're wasting some memory there, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. It's better not to. We should not send those. Um, but at the very least, it's not like that crazy. So out of range, we're seeing some GL buffer data issues here. So that's not good. Um, on mouse move. So probably this is related to this the fact that we were trying to draw the the g scores that we looked at my guess is that that's failing for some reason yeah because it's fine now uh so why the fuck is this a problem so here we are iterating over g scores which should be indexes into the points buffer <clears throat> we are appending node ids with the value of the index in that point buffer so i don't really understand oh uh we didn't bind we bound the custom evo here but everywhere else we have to go back to binding the normal evo probably So I'm just going to kind of chuck that at the top of each of these and see if that kind of fixes the problem. Uh, no, still out of range index. So this is coming from here. Uh, what's it complaining about? Can we go into the debugger and say pause on caught exceptions? 
Okay. So we're calling GL buffer data. Oh, uh, with length of zero. With length of zero, that's a classic. That's a classic. So what happens there is we say, hey, um, <clears throat> JavaScript. Here is our chunk of memory for WebAssembly. And I would like to take zero bytes from this offset. And that offset just happens to be an invalid integer, which doesn't matter because length of zero. So we intend, like the zig is intentionally doing that, but we can't call this with that. So we just say, uh, if point ID is len is equal to zero, return, there's nothing to do. There we go. So now I believe that this should be fine. And we should see no G scores rendered. Uh, so we should say start path, and we should see no error spam, big for us. And now we can uh, we can actually run, let's try actually running the path planner, because we are not actually doing anything right now, because we are returning off rip, so we'll just delete this. And now we should start seeing some clusterfuck. Which is exciting, exciting stuff. Uh, I don't know if I actually got the latest. Ooh, unreachable is getting spam executed here. Um, which is fun for us. Mouse move is hitting unreachable. It'd be nice to know why, you know? Uh, but we don't get that luxury. Surprisingly. It just says on mouse move unreachable. So there's some places to try to debug here. One is on mouse move. We could try actually logging the error. <laughs> Here we could say print. Let's at least get some intuition. <laughs> uh, e. Any. E. Some intuition, please. Please, sir. I would love some intuition. Uh, he's thinking, I think. Top. Yeah, he's doing some shit. Why is this taking so long this time specifically? What the fuck? Okay, there we go. Path start null. Okay, start path plan now, please. No path. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. So first of all, no path should not be making it all the way up. So here we can say uh, if if we have a path, we do all this. Else we ignore the error for now. Uh. We should call this new path so that everything else keeps working. And we might wonder why. We might wonder why. But until then, we could maybe at least see, we could still see if G scores are getting hit along this. Which it doesn't look like they are. So what the fuck? What the fuck? You know? So on run here, oh, because we didn't, we forgot the most important piece is we need to start, we need to use the start ID. <laughs> we have to run a path planner to run the path planner. Oopies. All right. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. That's... That looks a lot like we're doing the right thing. Right? Oh, geez, that's fucking slow. But, like, surely that's... That's something. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Okay, okay, that's a really that's really good. That's really good. Um So now 
all we have to do is like figure out where we came from. So we just have a uh, var came from is I guess an array list. No, what is this? This I guess is you need to track the you track a single node ID I assume for each one and then you just walk it backwards. Yeah, that seems right. So this is going to be a alloc allocate of node ID of length of length something. Uh, I just will just copy somebody else's length because we don't actually have the, oh, we do. We should have the uh, point num points. There we go. Uh, we mem set this to probably max node ID or zero. It probably doesn't really matter. We can probably leave it undefined to be honest because we should only look at came from on initialized nodes. So here we should just have people say self came, uh, not self, just came from is equal to for the neighbor value is equal to where we came from. So this current. And then at the end here, here instead of this, we should just say a uh, turn is a array list. Because we don't know how many steps we took at this point. I don't think. There might be some way to kind of like infer that, but I don't think we have to. And it might be more expensive to do it that way because you might have to track how many steps you took for each node or something. And so like, this is probably fine. Uh, we unconditionally deinit this at the end because we're gonna, we're gonna pull the data out at the end. We're gonna say while something true, <laughs> well, we're gonna push into this, but I don't know with what. So I guess we're gonna start at like the current node ID or the end value, and we're gonna say uh, var iterator. I guess it's kind of an iterator, right? Is end. And while it is not equal to start, we're gonna keep going. And we're just gonna say it is equal to the came from it. And before we do that, we're just gonna say try ret dot append it right just walk backwards then at the end of this we return ret dot to own slice maybe um then here let's not render the scene g scores because i think that they'll be it'll make it impossible to see the line uh we are not allowed to compare our strong typed node ids which is reasonable i guess so here we just compare their insides. We look at, <laughs> I don't like I don't like saying that I had to I want to compare their insides. That feels really fucking wrong. Isn't that just mem reverse? I think no. Uh because you have like uh okay, let's just say the path was you started at Say, say the path is 0, 5, 3, 2, right? What that looks like in the came from array is that uh, 0 came from 2. Uh, no, sorry. 0 came from nothing. 5 came from 0. Uh, sorry. This we don't know. This we don't know. No, no, no. Sorry. We do we, almost almost there almost there zero. We'll say it came from five. We're, we'll go the other way. Index one we don't know. Index two is kind of unknown as well. But three came from two. Four unknown and five came from zero. No three five came from three. This is like what we start with and this is what we end with. So this isn't just like a reverse data thing. It looks like a reverse, but it's just because like we're our iteration is by kind of like taking the index of the thing in the array we're looking at. So we jump from, from zero, we go to five to three, uh, zero to five, five to three, three to index two, two, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I didn't explain that very well because I uh, am bad at talking sometimes, but <laughs> I think I got the point across. I think I got it across. 
Um, and so I think that should work. Maybe? We will see! Okay, so we start planning a path. And we are not... Oh, wait, we are! Oh, wait, 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 wait! Uh, okay, so we need more colors. We need more colors. Because this is getting hard to manage. Let's just fucking... We'll fucking bite the bullet. And we will... We will actually have RGB in our renderer. Which we I didn't want to do initially because I was like, oh, we're gonna have to like bind like a VEC4, which is a pain in the ass. But we don't have to bind a VEC4. <laughs> we can just bind R, G, and B completely independently, like fucking idiots. And then we don't have to make more JavaScript bindings. Which is really good for us. Uh okay. <coughs> So here, wherever we were doing set uh, color set, now this becomes a uh, G, B, R, and G and B gets it to one. This is the same shit. So R, G, B, one, one. This is R, G, B. Since we're setting to one, we want this thing to be white, probably was the original intent. Probably, who fucking knows? R, we reset to zero. G, B, we reset to one. Okay, color R, G, B, all one. You wrote R, G, G. I sure did. Dude, I don't know how you guys catch that stuff. Like, I, I when I watch stuff like this, there's no fucking shot. I'm like, I don't even know if I'm like looking at the screen. <laughs> like, I cannot believe, I can't believe you guys are looking and noticing. Because I also feel like, like, uh, watching somebody else code is, like, really fucking hard. Like, because, like, I'm just, like, jumping around kind of with no semblance of, like, logic or reason. Just, like, shit just kind of, like, appears on the screen. And I'm surprised that you guys, like, are watching, like, are watching to the point where you can see what is happening and process it fast enough. And, like, know that I was wrong. Like, I don't know, it's just very impressive. Very impressive. I think the update call in the prior queue is broken because it checks the old and the new heuristics, but in any case, they will be the same. Let me think, let me think. So update. He checks, but doesn't he check the parent score? He compares the score of the parent with the with the score of the child, and the score of the child has like changed now. So sift up with self and update index. I like find myself in this array and then derive my parent by shifting right by one. So I think that this like compare function will return a different thing than it would have before. I don't think that there's any old heuristic left in here. It won't go into sift up or down, I think. Oh, I missed that. Ah. That's a good point. Good eye. Good eye. I wonder why it was like resembling a correct answer than when we were visualizing it. Okay. But I guess, oh, this is interesting. So this priority queue is like, maybe like the, I guess we just remove and add it, huh? Instead of calling update. I guess that's just what we have to do. So here should be queue, remove, index. Uh, we don't know what the index is though. So he retrieves the index by, can we get the index? What is on this thing? Indices are in the same order as the iterator, which is not necessarily priority order. Can we like find an element? Hmm. 
So he is just walking the tree to find the element in line. But he's kind of assuming that the sort order is the same, which is not true. So we need to like we need to like find the element before before we update the score. Then remove it, then re-add it. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. Okay, so fix me. Um, remove element based off old F score, then add back. That sounds right to me, but so like unknown, how do we find the old one? <clears throat> and that's just kind of this. Right? Like, so we can kind of do something like, uh, I feel like we were in the middle of something else a second ago. What the fuck were we working on? Because I want to finish that first. It was the color stuff. It was the color stuff. So we wanted to render the new, render the found path with a new color. Um, which was on mouse move. Yep. Yep. So here now let's just render the new path as like red. Sorry for the direction. Oh, no worries. I mean, I would, I'm, I can choose not to rechat, right? It's, uh, if I didn't think it was worth doing, then I wouldn't do it, but, uh, okay. So now I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see because the lines are so fucking thin, but we are, there is a path getting planned that is somewhat sane. Right here, there's a red line that goes here, 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 here. Like here, 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 here. So it does look like it's like doing something. I don't know why it just like stopped itself. What the fuck is going on? It's probably like unreachables happening. Why the fuck? That's weird. I don't understand why it would ever stop. Very strange. I've never seen that before. Uh, okay. Oh. So in some cases he's degenerating. Oh, well, yeah. Like, what the fuck is happening here? It still thinks that there's a path start. And it's logging it. He's just not finding a path. running path planner it happens when i return to the start node that sounds true found path and then we'll maybe even locked path but like i don't understand why it would be persistent in any way that's confusing to me right because there's no state associated with the end that i'm aware of It's like, good, good, good. Everything's good. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now he's finding, he's running the path planner. With the path start at 77793 or whatever. And we're just not finding an end. That's very confusing. Did I reset the G scores? I should be, right? Because here... On, we ended it on every mouse move. And here, the G-scores are set to infinity initially. There's something really fucking weird happening there. Something very strange. Um, I guess what we should do... Is we should at the very least render the target end. Um, running Path Planner from... From here to here. So 
So path start to node ID. Uh, he doesn't like that because these need to be logged as values. Things inside them. We want to look at their insides. <coughs> uh, okay. So here he's trying to render. So the start point is 2123509. We have to remember that. 2123509. And then we kind of like wander around a little bit. And he is still trying to log from 2123509 to what I would argue are like sane endpoints. But it looks like when what happened was I like disjointed. I, I think that I went out to somewhere that like it couldn't go to and then it stopped. Maybe it's working but incorrectly rendered. Um, no, because we are not seeing logs that it found the path. I feel like something breaks if I if I end up at a node that is not um not connected in some way. I suspect that we're like we're we're going into an island somewhere. And it's like, it can't find a path, and that breaks something, like, important. I just don't understand what. I wonder if we're, like, overflowing somewhere? Uh, in that case? If, like, just, if getting through all of the nodes is resulting in some form of memory corruption somewhere? Seems possible. Because, like, otherwise nothing should be persistent here. That's what's really bothering me, is, like, n nothing should be persistent. So maybe we can look at, um, I wonder if, like, the points, the points must be okay, because, um, we are still seeing this render correctly. However, I guess, maybe the CPU look into the points list is not okay. So I wonder if we can do, like, um... Let's just log here, points, len, and adjacency map, segment starts len, and adjacency map, uh, storage len. And we'll just kind of hope that these, these are okay. <laughs> uh, no field name land and point lookup. So this is points dot, uh, points dot something dot land items. The fuck is in here? Points, points dot points dot land. This will give us a clue on if there's like some form of memory corruption. Can you reproduce on small map, or if so, use debug build? Uh, I think I am using a debug build now, which is kind of silly. Uh, but it is worth checking if we can reproduce on the small map. Oh, interesting. So it's actually still fine. So it's not related to going outside into the river, even though it is like making the thing unbearably slow because it's trying to walk every single node in the entire world. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. If I hit start path plan now, please, again, hopefully it will reset it to somewhere close by. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, right now, we're, we, we should remember these numbers. These are important. Let's just try to see if we can, like, trigger the failure again. There we go. We triggered it. We triggered it. And it looks like these aren't corrupted. Yeah, interesting. I just don't have a good answer. I don't have a good answer. Oh, hold on. We could log the error. Like, like geniuses. <laughs> I forgot that we were just ignoring it. Maybe gives up if pathling is too long. But I just don't understand, like, there's something persistent here that is just very confusing to me. 
You know what I mean? Like the fact that the fact that it gets stuck in that state after it happens once just indicates like something really fucked up to me. I just can't I can't put my finger on it. I just, how the fuck? I don't even know what the repro is. Oh, here. Out of memory. The, so we must just not be freeing something. We just must have a leak. We must have a leak. And Daddy Firefox is protecting us. Thank God. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So. We just have to be careful here. So, F scores, well, yeah. Uh, okay. Is there anything else that we missed? Probably not. Oh, you're saying that we should give up. It went too long. Yeah, we probably should. You're right. You're right. But I'm, I'm not really sure that in release builds it's going to be a problem. And I also think that, um... We want, I want it to go fast enough that that actually never becomes a problem. Uh, okay. So I think that was that bug, which is nice. That's fixed. It is kind of cool just to see it working at all. It's kind of sick. And, uh, let's add a debug for showing the G scores. Um, so let's, where is that on mouse move? Let's make it so that we can see when the point, which points we've looked at. So if debug, uh, debug pathfinding, I guess we'll call it. We'll add that as another option to wherever the fuck our variables are. So this is going to be start as false. We're going to go to index HTML. We're going to add another debug checkbox. Uh, probably before the start path plan, it's going to be called debug path. Debug path. Uh, debug path finding. Path planning. Okay, and then in index JavaScript, we then need to copy paste this. I wonder if this is something that could be deduplicated. It feels like it could be. But who knows? I don't. <laughs> you know? Uh, this is debug path on change. And then we need to create our index zig that says uh, set debug path. Debug path finding. There you go. No field debug path finding? Really? I didn't save? Saving is important sometimes. Um, and let's see if that, now we can... Fuck, I wanted a new line. I want a new line. Always new line. Always Tim Hortons. Okay, you guys aren't from Canada. You guys aren't going to get that reference. You're just going to think I'm like a fucking idiot. Uh, but sometimes it's always fresh, and sometimes it's always Tim Hortons. Don't debut too much. You'll have very better wrecked, yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So, on ticket. There we go. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's going to be really crucial, I think. So now we can kind of look at like the case where we get like uber slow is when we go like here and just like the whole map turns red. Oh, funnily enough, it's not the whole map actually. It's only what I would call like the corner of the map. I was going to make a dick and balls joke, but then I was like, I probably shouldn't. It's like, we're, we're adults here. We, we, str we're, str anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So what is next now? What is next? So we need to fix the fact that the uh, the updating of the queue is not... Like, the, the, the next element pop is not taking into account the recent changes to the F-score. Right? Where that update function is not doing what we wanted it to do. So we'll fix that. Um, Which means that here we have to do something like... Um, I guess we'll just do this. <laughs> we'll say update index. 
is I guess we'll call this like neighbor Q index is Q compare function of the alum. So this is neighbor. Then we can say Q remove index neighbor Q index. And then we can add it unconditionally. I think you should be able to look for the node. If not there, add shift, else shift up. But I think that like this is how I have to look for the node. I'm only ever decreasing the value. Oh, interesting. That's a good point. That is a good point. Um, but I think that I'm okay with... Uh, yeah, I guess this is maybe a little expensive. Uh, also, this shouldn't return. So this will say... I guess we'll say break null. So then we can say that this is going to be a u size, probably. And uh, q, do they have sift up? It's not public, though. It's not public. It's a hard life. It's fine. We'll just do it this way for now, and we can always come back. Fix me sift up only. Uh, then this shouldn't be self items, it should be Q items. Anything that says self in this block needs to say Q. Okay, uh, compare function is not found, probably because it's like a, like a type of Q compare function is probably, it's probably like compile time in there. Less than function has no, really? How are they using it? Priority Q. Compare function. Oh. That's fine. We can cheat here as well. <laughs> Self less than. This is awful. I'm going to put a big fix in here. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Huge violation of abstraction. Huge violation of abstraction. Remove index. Uh, so here we say, if neighbor Q index, we remove it. Otherwise, we add it. All right. Um, value of node ID ignored. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. I don't know if this will result in any change of behavior because I didn't really see a path like this looks the same to me. Um, yeah, I don't really see a difference in behavior, but I suspect that there is some like minor difference that it's important. Mm, okay, okay, so I think it's. 350 which you know 10 minutes before the like target end i think that this is a good place to end it i think i'm pretty pretty happy with that i think there's definitely more work to do here i think that um probably we like the, the first obvious thing i can think of is that um i want to see some sort of penalty for turning um i think that like surely this path planning should not look like this on a diagonal, right? There's something like really stupid about here about this where we're we're planning like really wide um when really we should kind of try to go in the same direction that we're already going. I think that probably helps us in some way. Cuz we there's there's something there's some information about like a grid that we can leverage here. Um I also want to see well actually before we call it before we say we're like done done, let's um turn on optimizations. Because I want to see if, um, like, how, how actually slow it is. Because it feels pretty bad right now in terms of, like, trying to get it done in one frame. Which is maybe, like, a stupid target, to be honest. But I do like the idea of it feeling snappy. Um, 
Doesn't Google do a trick where they start from both sides? Oh, that seems like a good idea as well. Uh, this is, like, manageably bad. That's not manageably bad. That's really, fr that's, like, really bad. Going off screen, that's taking, like, lag of, like, two seconds or something. Which is not good. Um. But, yeah, I guess it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So, I, I would like to, I would like to see if we can, we can reduce this i think that there's maybe also some optimizations of like we could maybe look into like gpu optimization as well as um like graph decimation right i think that that's probably the simplest thing like like the the most correct answer oh look he's like a little happy little fish do you guys see the happy little fish's eyeballs right here and here's his little mouth he's gonna nom, 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 nom. uh anyways <laughs> there's probably something about uh uh like surely surely we can turn this big path this like big city into a smaller version of it and you could do you could do something like uh like maybe try to box off sections so you could say like i know that like within this area i'll, I'll only do small straight line paths and you could maybe approximate your large a, a star with a small a star something like that uh but all things for another day the other the other path to look down tomorrow if uh, I'll, I'll think about what i want to do but the other path we can look down is trying to bias this thing towards like different roads so we could we could start like adding like coloring to the lines for things that are like uh bike routes or like busy streets not busy streets and we can figure it out from there we can like maybe try to like multiply the cost um for those types of things but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll think about it tonight and see what I want to do. But either way, I think there'll be interesting work to do tomorrow. So apologies, Raiders. You came in just at the wrong time. But just to give you the quick pitch on what we're working on, if I can find my mouse, is this is a map of Vancouver, Canada. Um, and I'm making the map because it pisses me off that when I try to go to a bar, Google says, hey, take these three buses. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I know that it's faster to take a bus to the train than per train to where I'm trying to go. Like, I know that's faster. And he's like, no, 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 but you can't walk three blocks. No, 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 no. And so he gives me like really inconsistent slow routes and I want fast, consistent routes. And so I'm like, we can make, we can just make our own Google Maps. It's better and faster. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on. What we're at right now is we have like this like data that comes from open street maps. Um, and all we're doing right now is we have done like we just implemented today a star so we do like the shittiest version of a star and just like use straight line distance but that looks like you know that's a path that is goes from the start over here to the end over here which is a big win for us today um so that's what we're working on we're gonna try to like give it like wait waiting and use some heuristics we're gonna pull in translink data at some point and try to get like heuristics about the buses and stuff but this is what we have right now and it's pretty good pretty good at this point so yeah, you caught us right at the end. We're going to call it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more path planning improvements, uh, either optimization or configuration. Uh, for those of you who are here for longer, if you like what you saw, um, there's a YouTube link in the description where you can see like what we're working on right now, but also like previous projects. So if you want to check out like operating system, neural network, QR code decoder, video editor, terminal emulator, all that stuff is there. And there's a GitHub link in the Twitch description as well, uh, where code for all of this stuff ends up. Uh, if you want to contribute to the ball machine, there is a spheraphoria.dev. Um, you can upload your own WASM module, and we have like a little bit of a shitty tutorial on how to do that. Um, but if you have suggestions on how to make it less shitty, if you, there are things that you don't really get when you're going through this, feel free to reach out and let me know. But it's pretty cool if you want to like add to the visualizations on the right. Uh, we will accept people's submissions. So somebody added the black hole in the portal yesterday, which are both pretty sick. Pretty sick. Um, what else? What else? Uh, if you want to throw money at me for whatever reason, Twitch patreon um like subscribe twitch prime and we'll say bye youtube and twitch let's find someone to raid raiders from the other chat from ginger bill we are going to have to continue you on to the new person you guys get to do a little bit of train hopping today um but i hope you enjoyed your 45 seconds here and the next 45 seconds at l colon q um yeah 10 more seconds i have to say stuff for 10 seconds or else it's like kind of awkward you just like stare at me but uh, okay go have fun bye